Greetings, dear suckers. My name's Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. Here we are back in the Crooked Man, going into the final chapter. Kept you waiting, huh? Well, wait no longer. Scene 5. Home Sweet Home. This is the place, for sure. Could this be his house? Nah. Excuse me, can I have a second? What? Ain't seen you around here. Going for a stroll? Er, no, actually. Um, who lives here? Do you know them? Oh. You mean Mrs. McCahan? McCahan? Someone named McCahan lives here? Not anymore. Mrs. McCahan passed away last year. The house has been neglected ever since. Waste of a fine house it is. Oh yeah, I think she had a son. Wish she'd just rent out or sell the house. Do you know anything about her son? Also, are you actually a real person or are you another figment of your own imagination? Nah, never seen him. I only moved here a few years back. Heard he lives in an apartment a ways away. <laughs> Lived. I see. That all? I gotta get home by daybreak or my wife will be livid. <laughs> well, I certainly don't have to worry about that. With regards to my wife, I've made her a member of the Midnight Crew. As, you know, as they say, bring your wife in trouble, it will never trouble you. Or something along those lines. It's good to take a walk in the morning, but it's sure cold. Don't catch a cold or nothing. Uh, yes, thank you. You too. Okay. The mailbox says McGahan. Must have been the resident's name. No shit. <laughs> We kind of just established that. Then again, I guess, I guess he could have been lying. Nothing's growing in the planter. And as always, trees are a completely impassable barrier. Covered in dust. It's locked. Well, shit. Uh... Aha! A shoe shelf. Lots of musty women's shoes. As in the shoes are musty, or are they, or are they the shoes of musty women? The mirror cracked. Symbolism. A wash basin. The mirror has a big crack in it. Toilet water reeks. A washing machine, there are still clothes left inside. Interesting. That's not a wash basin, that's a... Whatever. The bath water is muddy, it smells bizarre. Okay. Why is there... Hmm. How peculiar. Damn it. Okay. Pieces of shattered plates. Garbage can is filled with rotten waste. Okay, so... Come on, it's not like you're barefoot. Just walk over it, you dumb bitch. Or just walk a... Just walk through it. It's not... You'd probably avoid most of it, but... Okay, sure, you big baby. A walk... 
around. Ugh. That's going to come back to... The, being unable to go through that door is going to come back to bite me in the ass, isn't it? And it'll be really stupid when it does. Bookshelf, bookshelf. An old telephone. You're an old telephone. There's a big gash in the wall. Oh, is that what that is? Kind of hard to... Broken teacup. A scrap from a notebook. I recalled the rhyme of the crooked man. All he could do was live in a crooked house with a cat and mouse just as crooked. I was the same way. Everything I wished for ended up crooked. My dreams, my love, even my family. But that's the thing. A crooked man wouldn't see it all as crooked. It would all look normal. Because, he, because his viewpoint is just as crooked. If you're a crooked man, then maybe everything that you wish for, your dreams, your love, and your family, aren't crooked, and that's why they seem so to you. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the problem is that you aren't crooked. That you're incapable of adjusting your own viewpoint to your circumstances. Or something like that, I don't know. How did the crooked man live? Was he sorrowful in the depths of despair? Such a life has no meaning. Well, first of all, as I said, why would he be? As for such a life having no meaning, I don't see how that follows. Sorrow is not meaningless, and neither is despair. Nor are crooked things. After all, as Neil Cesarega put it, Nothing worth loving isn't askew. I don't think I agree with that. It's far too absolute. But the general sentiment, sure. The TV has a big crack in the screen. Double chair. Okay. Shelves have tools and cleaning equipment. Shelves are full of old junk. The floor is scuffed up. Cardboard boxes. Scrap from a notebook. The hotel. The school. The hospital. It was the same at all of them. My saddest memories wouldn't go away. Writing wouldn't calm down my heart. In the end, my festering heart just oozes more. And I tear up the paper. Mine is an empty existence. I have nothing to leave behind. Not even words. Well, that's just, like, your opinion, man. Toppled coat hanger, a broken mirror, again, symbolism. Actually, maybe not symbolism, maybe it's just him destroying it. Maybe it's just someone wrecking the place. The closet door is half open, there are coats and such inside. Yeah, I guess a, cr a broken mirror isn't really that symbolic when everything's broken. It's just more of the same, eh? The dresser drawers have been left open. They're full of women's clothes. An open shelf. Looks like there are some albums inside. A fallen radio. A dirty bed. It's early morning outside. It's early morning. The sun comes out. Like a singer already yell out. A toppled floor lamp. The light bulb is shattered. Why? 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 What do you mean, why? There is no why. The world is not so... The world is not such a small and boring thing that it could be explained. 
and neither are you. Um. No, 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 There's nothing in them. Stack of firewood, probably for use in the fireplace. Duh. A sooty fireplace. A toppled trash can. There's a few pieces of trash inside. There's a door leading up to the attic, but it won't open. Okay then. The paintings fall onto the floor. Must have been hung on the wall before. Out of cigarettes. I need a smoke. Do you, though? Damn it, man. Those will kill you. There's almost nothing in the desk. A deflated volleyball sits on top. Huh. Was he into volleyball? Maybe. Who knows? There aren't many clothes in the closet. A few men's coats and suits. How dare you assume their gender. A pile of books on law. Messy, messy. Full of crumpled paper. Any of it readable? No, apparently not. Men's jacket. A black covered notebook. What do you mean black cover? Oh, oh, you mean the cover is black. I thought you were saying it was covered with black. And I was like, black is not a substance. The rule on this notebook matches the scraps I have. Combined all the scraps into the notebook. Okay. Was there any more? There's a name on this. Duke. Duke McGahan. Duke, huh? If you're paying attention, you'll notice that Duke starts with D. Huh. Huh. That's a pretty normal name, I suppose. Maybe there's symbolism to it. Maybe not. Let's see. Is there anything new here, though? Um... I don't know. If there is anything new there, I can't find it. Oh, right. Has the this door mysteriously... Oh, hi. How many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? Yeah, yeah. Scream all you want. Crooked man. I... I can't go over to your side. He's... up there, isn't he? Then I'll be going there. This will be... the end. Okay. Alright then. One last battle. For all the beings. One last lesson for this old man. Wait, hang on a second. I've got a gun, don't I? I can just... Okay, apparently I can't just do that. Apparently that table is an impassable barrier to bullets. Sure, it might as well be. Hacks. Oh, 
shit. Oh, you cheating bastard. Sick of you're sick of me killing you flawlessly each time, so you're just cheating out these attacks, aren't you? Ah. Uh, fine then. Just need to kill you quick then. That's easy enough. Just need to keep cheating you out on these corners. As always. No, better than always. Yeah! Eat shit! Now stay down this time. I'm not going to be like you. You won't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. As much misery as I encounter, as painful and bloody as it might be, I'll keep living. So, be gone! Hell, it's about time. Do we still have that? Yeah, here we go. And there we go. Like it never even happened. <laughs> Told you I'd beat him every time without a scratch on me afterward. Well, I keep my promises. Let's go. There's a door to the attic. You might be able to pry it open. <laughs> open the door or do nothing. <laughs> yeah, let's. We came all this way. Let's just leave. <laughs> no. Let's see this through. There's nothing out there that could phase us at this point. After all, we know exactly what we're, what we're gonna find up here, don't we? Duke. This could never have ended any other way. You, you detested me, though I lived such a similar life. You hated how I lived comfortably. So, you wanted to drag me down, to take me with you. Misery loves company, after all. But didn't you want to be saved deep down? So... You called me. Yeah. After all, if you froze a moment in time of one man desperately grasping onto the other, would you be able to tell if that man was dragging the other down or if the other was dragging that man up? Mayhap. Mayhap. No, that's not right. Oh? You were trying to help me. To tell me, don't come the way I've come. Thank you. Nothing will make you suffer anymore. Where you're going, it's a good place. So... <sighs> Is it... Is it now? Now, you can rest in peace. Now that, that sounds like cope. It's an ugly thing, death, isn't it? P 
people try to prettyify it, but you can't polish a turd, now can you? And you certainly can't polish Oblivion. It's not a good place he's going. It's no place at all. And if he made the choice he did, thinking that he could rest in peace where he was going, then he was a damn fool. But then, we already knew that, didn't we? Don't be happy for him, David. Be happy that you aren't him. Be happy that you didn't take the same path. Even though you walked so much of his before. Wow. Sounds like a real ordeal, David. I mean, finding a corpse while you're on a trip? But it sounds like it ended up alright. <sighs> well, not for the guy, I suppose, but then he was dead before we even went on that trip. He would have had to be, or he wouldn't have been a skeleton. Well, probably not anyway. So yeah, it ended up alright. For David. And as for... Duke? Well, there never was anything we could have done for him. No was there. I'll... I'll go get you some tea. He was beaten by the crooked man. He was dragged to the other side. The crooked man was always right behind me. I realized he was there. Every time I was sad, I felt like he was whispering to me. It was the voice of the threat trying to murder you. The crooked man really, really needs to get a life. I mean, goddamn. I knew if I acknowledged it, I was done for. So I tried not to think about it. If all this hadn't happened, I think sooner or later, I'd take his same path. Thinking of it that way, he really did save me. Well, maybe. Who knows what the future could have held. For all we know, you would probably have been perfectly fine. And he actually just increased the odds that the threat would have gotten you. You know? If wishes were fishes, then beggars would ride and all that. Always... Always such an easy target, aren't you? That's why you got dragged into this. It's fine. The crooked man is gone. Hello? Hey, it's me, the crooked man. <laughs> Huh? Oh. Okay. I... I'll, I'll head right there. David? What's up? Who was it? The hospital. Mom's condition took a turn. They're preparing to do the operation. T take my bike. It'll be faster. You gotta go! Don't sit there staring! Doctor! Mom... Mom's condition. To be honest, this is rather risky. Removing the tumor isn't too difficult, but she might not have the strength to... Doctor. Please. My mom. She's... She's the only family I have. Please. Sign this. We're getting ready now. We'll do the best job we can. Okay. Doctor! Mom! Mom? 
the tumor was successfully removed. She's still sleeping now. We might have a chance if she wakes up. Well then go in there with some smelling salts. Tonight will be the biggest hurdle. Have faith in her. Or don't. Either works. David? Mom! Mom. Oh, thank God. You woke up. You really... I, f I felt like I was in darkness. I was scared. Screaming. I must have worried you. And those things I did to you. I'm so sorry. It was hard, wasn't it? It's okay. It's okay. You helped me open my eyes. Mom. I was so unhappy. I was always just struggling to be happy. But I didn't give my mother the happiness she needed. And after all the hardship I'd given her. I foolishly doubted. Thought I wasn't loved. Wasn't needed. That's why I... Do you hate me for it? Don't be silly, David. Don't, yeah, David, don't be such a silly Billy. Indeed. Indeed. You and I both. It's hard to say we were always happy. But... Even in sad times, you were always honest. You lived a straight and honest life. I was so proud of you. Having you as a son was my greatest happiness. Don't focus on the sad things, and I'm sure you'll notice all the happiness hiding around you. Davy, I'm thirsty. Can you bring me some water? Only if you don't keel over dead as soon as I leave the room. Sh sure. Just, just a second. God fucking damn it. Here, here you go, mom. <sighs> mom? For fuck's sake. Mom. Mom. She got a good funeral. I'm sure your mother's happy now. No, she isn't. She's dead. <laughs> you gotta be tired, huh, David? You okay? No, he's not okay. His mother just died. What the hell kind of question is that? She told me she was happy in the end. If I'm going to live without blaming myself, those words are going to help a lot. It's fine if I have to suffer, if I can be smiling in the end. <sighs> That's the spirit, Davy boy. David. Marion? Why are you...
Shirley? Why are you? Hey, Shirley, I still ain't forgiven you. How dare you give David the cold sh- Ow! Ow, 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 ow! Hey, fuck off, Marion. Don't do my boy dirty like that, you asshole. Ahem. We're going. Okay, okay, stop pinching me. David, I heard about your mother. So you brought flowers, Shirley? Mom always liked you, so I bet she's glad. Thanks. David, I was uneasy. You were a cunt is what you were. I got unsure of where I was going. Worried that the road I was walking would be full of twists and turns. Of course it would be. That's just life. So I took it out on you and your kindness. You never let me down, but how did I repay you? I'm really the worst of the worst. Yes, you are. Especially considering you're bothering him with your fucking self-pity when he's just lost his mother, you asshole. He doesn't need this! Fuck off! If all- If all you've got is your self-pitying routine, you can, don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. I'm- I'm sorry. Maybe this is too late, but... David, if it's okay with you, would you like to... D David, I'm sorry. Please don't cry. No, I'm not sad. I'm just... Even though my dreams were crushed, and I just lost my only family, I'm just so happy you came back. It's okay, Shirley. However off-kilter things get, we can set them straight. If that's what we want. David. You know what I think? The crooked man had a crooked body and only crooked things. But I'm sure he was happy living in his crooked house. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been saying this whole time. I mean, he had a... <laughs> he had a house of his own, that's... I hope to see you again. Until then... Rest in peace. Yep. Until we discover how to reanimate the dead. Rest in peace. I'm working on it. Good end. Bye bye, Blackbird. Okay. Well, that was... The Crooked Man. A pretty neat little RPG Maker horror game. I mean, I mean, horror game is a bit dubious. It was more sad than scary, but Special thanks, VG person. 
Yeah, we've got a lot to thank VG person for, don't we? <sighs> and that's the end of the tale of the Crooked Man. And that's the end. Oh, wait, what's this? Thank you for playing the Crooked Man and congrats on the good ending. This is a bonus area. You, you'll lose access to it if you quit, so I recommend making a save. You can also begin a second playthrough here. Okay. <laughs> that looked a bit weird, but all right. About the series. This ends the Crooked Man, but the series continues with the Sandman, which we are, in fact, going to play. The Boogeyman, which we'll probably play, and the Hanged Man. Wait, I'm pretty sure we were dealing with a Hanged Man in this game, but alright. Please try them if you like. No, I'll try them if I don't like. You can begin a second playthrough on the title screen. The story battles and branches won't change, but some events toward the end will. Give it a shot if you want. Mm. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video checking out the differences, I don't know. But for now, anyway, this is where our journey with the Crooked Man ends. This playthrough has been a lot of fun. I mean, the gameplay has been, been rubbish as usual when it comes to RPG Maker Horror games, or a lot of horror games in general, really. But, pretty interesting story. It took a very interesting perspective to quite a lot of stuff that you don't normally see, and it gave me a chance to expound on a lot of philosophizing and such. So yeah, I don't regret playing this in the slightest. I do find it kind of funny that the penultimate video of this was the last video I put out before my computer stopped functioning. It was as if my it was as if the world itself was trying to stop me from getting here, but it didn't fucking work. So I'll leave you with this one last little piece of my mind. There have been quite a few things I've seen, a fair few things, that do something like this, where they take some nursery rhyme or what have you, and spin a whole tale using it as sort of a analogy or whatever. And one thing they have in common is that, as far as I've seen, none of them really resemble the original all that much. They've got, I mean, got some loose analogies and such, but when it comes to these sorts of analogies, whether it's nursery rhymes or fairy tales or all those fucking chess analogies I've seen, when you really look at it, it's n it isn't nearly as similar to the original as they make it out to be. It's really more just mapping their own struggles or what have you onto it crudely and dressing it up so you don't notice i mean this story used the cr the crooked man and all his crooked things as an analogy for this sort of askew life full of sorrow and despair but the original crooked man it wasn't as though his life was a bad one, or even anything truly wrong with him. He was just a crooked man living amongst crooked things. It was just a funny little tale without any real meaning to it. And people do love to find meaning in meaningless things. No, that's not right, is it? They're not finding meaning in it, they're mapping meaning they already had onto it. And in the end, that's all our metaphors and analogies and symbolism and such are, just twisting the map 
to fit a different territory. I don't really have any deep thoughts about that, it's just... Well, it's just a funny story, isn't it? Make of it what you will. But for me, I shall leave you here. For now. Until next time, dear viewers. I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. Fuck you all so much for watching, and sayonara, suckers.